All right, now I'm going to do a pro forma balance sheet. So last time we made that pro forma income statement, right? And now we're going to use that same percent of sales method. method. Um, uh, so I've added a pro forma on the balance sheet side. Now, some things are naturally going to track sales. So things like accounts receivable here, materials and supplies, uh, payables um, down here. Uh, those are the sorts of things that tend to work well with percent of sales method. A lot of other things on the balance sheet are not tied to sales. Some things can be, so cash can track sales pretty well year over year. Uh, property can track sales. Uh, they don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the percent of sales for the things I think should be relatively close to percent of sales, and then I'm going to... Um, look at some of the others and see if I see anything else I think is tracking sales well for UNP in particular. Um, uh, so I'll start here with accounts receivables and I'm going to do equals average. So again, we're going to do average um, percentage uh, of, of sales. And so what I'm going to want is all these right here. And I'm going to do this in a particular way. You can come up with your own way if you want. Um, I just think this ends up being cleaner. So I'm just going to do that um, times income statement. And here's our, um, our total sales that we're trying to um, tie it to. And so I'm going to lock that in particular. And then I'm going to go back into my average here. And I'm going to divide each of these by the relative sales for that year. So this is going to be this one lock. Then D is going to be here, lock, and E, divide by this, lock, then F, divide by. The main reason I'm doing this is if you jump back and forth between sheets, all of your balance sheets uh, are going to look. Um, so like this G5 will become quote balance sheet quote exclamation G5 and stuff. So it's not that it matters, I guess. It just makes my equation shorter and cleaner, which I prefer. Um, but anyway, once I do that, I should be able to hit enter. It's going to give me an estimate. I probably don't need 400 decimal places. I'm going to match the formatting of the others really is what I want. Um, so I'm going to do it like that. And you'll see the estimate is fairly similar to last year's level. Uh, again, it may not be perfect, but it's not a bad assumption for um, accounts receivable, materials, payables uh, are the three I would ex uh, account payable. Here we go. Are the three that then can do this and probably come up with fairly good estimates. Um, the rest of them might. Uh, and so I'm going to create something similar to a common size balance sheet here. Um, only I'm going to common size it rather than to assets like we did with the common size balance sheet before. I'm going to create a copy real quick that I'm going to end up deleting. So don't worry about what it's called or anything. And then I'm going to take um, this and make it balance sheet here over income statement revenues for the year I just did and I'm gonna lock just the six like we did for um, like we've done before for common size. So it's just like a common size but instead of a common size balance sheet everything divided by assets for that year it's divided by revenues for that year. And then should be able to just drag that over and then drag it down and we can kind of see like cash is kind of hung out six ish percent of revenue so it has tracked revenues fairly well so I could mark that one as possible um, we already did this one as percent of sales this one is percent of sales this does not track based on this right a lot of zeros there was one it doesn't really look like it's uh, and you're just looking for things that stay flat about the same year to year again total current assets is summed up on our so we don't need to worry about it um, so like investments was six, it went down a little, went up some, it went up again, went up again, but it's up as a percent of sales. So it's not staying flat as a percent of sales. So I probably wouldn't do that. 
Uh, net properties have increased a lot relative to sales levels. Uh, hasn't stayed flat. Um, not other assets. Definitely not debt due with one year. Even if it tracked it, I probably wouldn't use it. Um, because that's the sort of thing that shouldn't track sales. Um, debt doesn't look flat. This doesn't look flat. Um, maybe commitments and get to or other long-term liabilities. I'd have to know what that was, before, and it has gone up some, relatively speaking. So, you know, again, you're just looking for things where the percentages have stayed almost exactly the same across the years. Uh, I would not do it with common stock or any of this anyway, because it shouldn't track sales. So really the only other thing you could probably use percent of sales on for this particular company is cash and cash equivalents. And again, this is all feel. This is nothing scientific really going into it. I'm just kind of looking and seeing what I think. Um, so I'm going to go back to my balance sheet and I'm going to copy my percent of sales and put it here uh, as well for cash and cash equivalents. And then everything else, um, I'm going to hit equals previous year like that. And again, what you would do is then go find more information on these other things and how, how we should project it. We'll hopefully have time to talk more about this in class. Um, and so we'll just carry over some values. And again, it also has to do with, especially the assets, or the, the liabilities and the common shareholder like we did with the book work. Um, <clears throat> part of that has to do with uh, changes in assets being projected and then how are we going to finance that by, by looking at the DF and then balancing it out and things like that. So, um, so then my pro forma uh, will not necessarily be balanced, right? So we're going to end up down here with assets and uh, assets of 57,991 and then liabilities and shareholder equity slightly below that. And then, like I said, you'd have to make decisions are we funding that with short term debt or equity or whatnot. So anyway, that's the the idea behind a pro forma balance sheet, pretty straightforward. Um, and that's the last part of this chapter.